Hello. Okay. So I think we are going live on there. There seems to be a slight delay between my lips and the um, thing there, but hopefully that's not too distracting. Um, I'll get it all downloaded later anyway and, and upload to places. So, hello. So here I am. I've got my cup of tea. I'm standing up today, so we've got a different um, different background. It's also kind of weird because I've got myself on two screens here. One is the Facebook, and one's a different thing. So I'm trying to cut one down a bit, and we'll we'll crack on. So uh, yeah, sorry I haven't managed to do this quite every week, but you know I'm I'm trying to keep up with some of it, and I do have the hat. So there's that, as they say. And what I'm going to do is quickly. Um, like I did before, because I think some people quite liked it. Give a shout out to you if you've e emailed me. It's, and, I, and I do kind of email people as well and say, by the way, I, you know, here's the video where I say hello to you. So, um, catching up with my emails then. So, I had a really nice one from Milton. So, hi, Milton. Um, very, a very, very sweet one about telling me about his uh, Labradors and um, and the lovely life that he's had with those. I'm sure they had a very happy, happy life. And, uh, you know, they are beautiful dogs. I mean, I know not everybody watching or listening is going to like dogs, but, uh, you know, a lot of people do. And uh, if you're going to have dogs, Labradors are great ones to have. And ours is certainly, um, certainly a very nice one. She's nearly nine now, but uh, but nice and fit. So, um, so that's great. Thank you very much, Milton. Um, some of these seem to have got on my tablet here, seem to have been put together for some reason. So thank you to Ken, who... Uh, sent me a, a link to a moody blues song um so i have to check that out thank you very much always nice just to get i don't really mind people send me and if you want to send me something a link to a, a song or whatever fine it's great I'll, I'll i'll check it out so uh thank you very much for that um and bonnie who we've, we've mentioned before thank you bonnie always uh, great to hear from you um and you really liked the uh story let's have a look which one that was sorry it's um Oh, I think, oh no, this was the, this is one little while ago. This is a standalone bit of flash fiction, which is on the, on the blog at mikeycampling.com and it's called Crushing Out in Style. And it was actually, um, I don't know if I explained this on the web, website, but it was a, uh, a prompt, people at, it's the thing I signed up for, they're meant to send you, it's Reedsy actually, they're meant to send you a prompt every Friday and I only ever seemed to get, I got one and that was it. <laughs> So um, that was that one, and it said something about um, the person who caused the biggest financial crash in history is hiding in plain sight. And so that's the story that I wrote to that, which is worth a look if you want to look out on that. It's called Crushing Out in Style, um, which I came up with that title. But, you know, just that was all I had, literally the prompt, and it's that's on the website. So... Um, so David, thank you very much. David emailed saying, really like the God Machine. Now that's written quite a while ago. I've recently put a new cover on it, but uh, it, it's a free book on all, all the platforms. I also kind of send it out to you free when you sign up for my newsletter, but um, you can just go to any of the stores where it's available and it's, it's free. It's something we wrote between a few of us. Uh, and it's a nice story. It's very short. And we did think there were going to be sequels and follow-ons, but um, it's always hard getting people all on the same page, literally, to to put something together. So there was, um, what happened was it was uh, Drew Avery uh, came up with the concept of several people writing 500 words each. And then uh, there was, there's, you have to check it. Um, I don't want to get the names wrong. It's Chris Godso and um, I think it was the other one, Jamie, Jimmy Dodge, I think. So long since I've, this is quite a while ago anyway. It, it's out there. And it's called a God Machine, and it's uh, it's quite a nice little sci-fi read. It's quite a sort of uh, concepty type thing about people writing the universe into reality. It was an idea. I'm not sure who came up with it, but um, I kind of took those quite rough. I have to say, I'm not being nasty about. It. They were quite rough, sort of 500 words dashed off from three different people, and I sort of rewrote it and stitched it into a book so that it had a kind of sense of uh, follow through to it. So. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's somebody gave it a really nice review the other day. I noticed just the other day, it's still sort of getting some nice reviews. So, um, so it's good. And and that somebody says, yeah, it's it's over very. Um, that was David saying it's, they really liked it. So thank you, David. It's nice to know that people are still enjoying it. 
Um, oh, that's another one also from David, who's just saying thank you for things, you know, which is always nice. And I do appreciate it when people say, uh, you know, thanks for free books and things. It's always, always great. Um, so that's just more of a housekeeping one. Um, and Rosemary, who's uh, who's a great, great supporter and brilliant. So thank you again, Rosemary, emailing me uh, to show me her review, which I do really appreciate. I mean, I, I, I tend to see reviews sooner or later anyway, but it's always nice for somebody just to say, by the way, you know, giving you a review and then it gives me a chance to do this. And I can say thank you very much. So thank you very much, Rosemary, number one Welsh fan, um, which is a beautiful place. If you haven't been, go and visit Wales, go and spend all your money in Wales. Um, used to spend quite a lot of time going to Wales because I used to live for about um, more than five years. I actually lived in Cheltenham, my wife's from Cheltenham, and that's not very far across the border into Wales. And I had uh, family um, in the Hereford type area, that kind of borders, sort of Ross and Wye type Hereford, that whole area, which is uh, really beautiful. And also I've been sort of, you know, further afield in, in Wales as well. So we used to go camping a lot, which was great. Great fun. Always, uh, always a really good place to visit. Um, sorry, but the uh, tablet just did that thing of flipping over sideways and you lose your place completely. Um, so anyway, thank you, Rosemary. Um, so that is a promo thing. Uh, and Josie sent an email, so... Um, which is great. So another, you know, person who's high, <laughs> supportive and wonderful. So thank you very much, Josie. Um, I was just saying that she was enjoying the, um, the serialized story, which is the Freshly Roast Mystery um, and Raw Gibbs Tales. Again, they're coming out. There should be another one tomorrow. I don't know what topic yet. If you have an idea for a topic that you think uh, a piece of human life that Raw Gibb ought to explain, Please let me know, and I will uh, make. I will get him on it. I'll make sure he he writes something to explain. To you. I had quite fun with the last one where he was explaining. Um, so he had some fun with the last one explaining various idioms, um, little little sort of phrases and things, um, which was kind of a, a joke as well. And. Sorry, I lost the name. Oh, Todd, yes, Todd was sort of saying thanks for giving the message of it, <laughs> mentioning me in the video. So if we keep doing that too much, I go around in circles, won't um, I? But, um, and uh, he sent me a thing, which I, I must admit, I haven't got around to checking, sent me a link, and I must check that. I usually think, oh, I'm going to do that later, and then you know how it is with emails. It's so hard to keep track sometimes. So, and Rene sent me a... Um, a, uh, a mention there, which says it's just an, oh, it's an attachment. Oh gosh, sorry, I haven't opened the attachment. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, Rene. I, I thought it was a link and it's, um, I just got in a muddle with my inbox as usual. But I must check that out. So thank you for sending me some music. Um, so that is very cool. That, I'm not sure about that one. Um, Sometimes a bit confusing. Sometimes people sort of accidentally hit reply, I think, and then end up getting an empty reply. That one's come out a really weird size. <laughs> uh, and it is from Victoria. So thank you very much, Victoria, saying that she's really enjoying Fresh Roast Mystery. mystery. Um, I hope people are enjoying it. as It, it is a, a different thing, a new thing, um, going in into this, this kind of mystery story. Some have been wanting to do a long time. Um, I really wanted to do a crime type story, but I didn't particularly want to go into some of the dark stuff. Um, really didn't want to have that in my head at the moment. Um, you know, there are nicer things to think about. So whilst I, I do read some gritty crime um, from time to time, and I, I quite enjoy it, you know, obviously I realize it's fictional and it's, uh, I, I enjoy those things. I don't necessarily, at the moment anyway, want to spend my time sort of delving into the dark recesses of the human psychology, which you kind of have to do in that kind of 
when you're writing, you do, if you really want to get into the characters, you do have to sort of spend some time with them. And I don't know if I really wanted to do that. I, I thought I'd rather go into something else. I mean, some of my other loves are sort of things like Agatha Christie and Sherlock Holmes. Um, I was really chuffed today. Just they were saying today they're going to put um, Sherlock Holmes on the new 50 pence piece. And that's nice. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, it's more, more that kind of style. It, I have actually today... I can announce, um, I see somebody, I don't know who though, is, 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 is a person watching. Um, I hope people can hear me. There's, there's no comments here to say they, they can or can't. So hopefully it's all okay. Um, sorry, I lost my thread again there. Um, yeah, I finished it basically. Freshly roast mystery first draft is finally in the can. I, I went back and did some restitching of it because, um, because it was going to be a standalone flash fiction piece. I didn't bother having the characters meet because in my mind, I've already got, I already had sketched out an opening scene in a totally different style, as it happens, different point of view, everything of the characters meeting. And I was going to do it a bit like the Holmes and um, the, the Holmesian thing of, of having, um, do you know, my mind's just gone blank. It is Dr. Watson, isn't it? Yes, of course it is. Don't know what I was thinking then. Um, I was going to do it from the sidekick's point of view, in other words, just as, as he's supposed to be writing the, the stories for the Strand magazine. I was going to do that. And I thought, no, that's actually quite limiting. So I, I went away from that. And I have um, I had to rewrite that to make it fit. So I've just rewritten the part where now, when the finished book comes out, uh, Dan... Um, who's my main character, and uh, Alan actually meet. Excuse me. So it's the, <laughs> that is in the can. It's about about 30,000 words now, so it'll probably come in at around 100 pages, so not a long read, sort of novella-type length. Um, I toyed with the idea of making it longer, but I, I don't want to sort of pad it out with just any old thing. You know, it's got a got a every scene, every line where he's got to pay its way. So um, that will be getting a, a good sort of rewrite and a, and, a, and a proper edit from me as well and all the sort of checking and everything and then it'll be coming out. And I might actually keep the title Freshly Roast Mystery was a working title, but I kind of quite like it. Um, I just learned today that there are actually a kind of mystery called culinary cosy mysteries, which are these ones that are all based around cafes and cake shops and things and although food and cafes and cups of coffee and things are involved in this story it's not really kind of about that it's not you know it's not like finding somebody dead in the cake mix or anything it's it's not like in fact it's quite a historical um aspect to it um and i will another day i'll do a little talk on that for you and i will explain some of the background because I actually it must have taken me about an hour the other day, I, I thought I'm going to give people, um, probably put them on their website. I don't know if they'll be in the book, but I got a page full of links that I can point people to if they're interested in, um, in what things are based on, because things are inspired by real places. Oh, I've changed names. Um, but there is a lot in there. So for instance, if you, if you've read any of Freshly Roast Mystery, it starts off in a cafe as a well in the corner. And they say this is the well where St. Sidwell, according to the legend, was this young lady who was murdered, having head chopped off with a scythe. Um, now, there, there, I can't remember if I've mentioned this in another video, but there is a legend and there is a cafe which is in the area and it does have a, you know, a well in it. And that I went in there and I, it just it seemed odd, it seemed quirky, it seemed interesting stored it away and wanted to use it for later so there are all kinds of places there's a, a house i visited like um kind of a stately home that i went on a tour of and that inspires part of it as well i renamed it and moved it somewhere else and you know the family name is fictitious the house name is fictitious the the, the grounds and everything don't exactly bear any resemblance but um but there are sort of links there you know and there's it's not a historical essay. It, it's not trying to pass itself off as a piece of historical fiction. So um, the events are inspired by real events and could have happened 
and some of the things are real actually i'm delivering a talk on this now aren't i, I didn't really intend to but you know some of the events are real so there's there's a there's mentions of of regiments and battalions and things which did exist and so the devonshire regiment were awarded the quad de guerre for the defense you know and, and so on it, which is all mentioned so that is that, that is true so there's an underlying um bit of truth to a lot of it which was fascinating although a little bit um sad to think about so some of the things you know the first world war well, the tragic events um and young lives lost um but back to back to whizzing through the email so sometimes the name oh well done so I've just written a story about Dan. This is from Dan. Thank you very much, Dan, who was a real, a real private investigator. And uh, so when he opened his office in 96, a friend sent him a red fedora, which is, wow. I don't think I could carry that off. I mean, I struggle with the grey one, I think. But um, <laughs> I think a red one, no, it's not going not gonna to work for me. Um, maybe if I was younger, who knows, if only. Um... I'm not that one is someone called Phyllis who's asking a question uh, saying did I suggest you try an audio book well I don't actually have audio books out and they're very expensive to produce and although I do love reading my own stories they would have to be done at really good quality and I do have equipment I've got a nice microphone and everything I've got good recording software I could do it so I hope one day to do some audio books but I don't have any out yet I probably will record them myself at the moment um, it's a bit of a stretch, the ones that are done in an American um, spellings and voices and everything. I, I don't know if I could maintain an accent that long, um, but I will get to them eventually. So this looks like it's an empty one. Uh, OK, so try to find the name. Patricia. So thanks, Patricia. Um, you're asking how many chapters there are. For the Freshly Roast Mystery, they are, there are at the moment, uh, there's a new kind of, I have to renumber them, um, it, not counting that the front one, because that I started at part one and now there's a, another, an earlier part one, the part 0.5 or something. Um, it's about 10, about 10, 11, something like that. So, um, yeah, so I think we're up to about five or something on the blog. Um, I only posted it up the other day, but I've already gotten a pickle with it. But yeah, um, I did mention in, in the newsletter, I think, and I certainly did in the blog, that as things have been changed, I have gone back and sort of done a quick copy and paste back into the blog. Uh, but I can't kind of keep doing that event. It, it's, it's, you've got to kind of take it at face value and say, yeah, it's a first draft. You know, it's it's a work in progress. So um, I tr tried to make sure that it just kind of makes sense to people reading it on the blog. But um, obviously the finished book will be coming out uh, on Amazon and so on. But I, I can't keep going back and sort of endlessly uploading things because they will you know, I don't know what stage people are of reading it. So it's just one of those things, really. Uh, and I would love to know if you are enjoying reading it on the blog, please do go over and put some comments on. So I'd really love to know what you like or what you don't like i mean if you're a, a keen reader of mysteries and you think it works in that way i would love to know if you think there's a problem with it that it's not your kind of cup of tea as a mystery reader i'd love to know that as well obviously not everybody likes everything but um i hope they do so i hope that's answered that one patricia um and phil so Thanks, Phil, for getting back to me with uh, feedback on the false positive, which is the story um, that went out to some tribe people to uh, get a, a bit of feedback on. So, yeah, I, I did read your feedback when it came in. Um, OK, so thank you very much. That was all great. I mean, I, I, you know, I look at these things at the time. And so that's just my way of saying thank you very much. Give you a shout out. So um, well done. G give me a whole load of feedback there, which I looked at at the time. Um, OK, name doesn't seem to be on that one. Oh, Joe, Joe, it's a bit hidden away. So Joe um, has email. Thank you very much, Joe, emailing me to say they've um, 
sent me the Martian Chronicles as, as a, you know, I say, um, suggest some classics and yeah, fantastic ones to suggest. I mean, Ray Bradbury, I think it's fantastic. June. Yeah. I mean, I, I um, had a bit of a phase of just sort of going mad and getting obsessed with those. And uh, it was about the time the, that film came out all those years ago, that stinging. It's about then I was reading them. And they did do some more books, but I kind of, I thought, oh, this is getting silly now. You know, I, read, I don't know if I read four or five or something like that, but they were amazing. The Source, I haven't read. I don't know if that's the same as the film, The Source, but I must check that out. That sounds good. Either way, actually, it's quite an interesting film, so I wouldn't mind. Oh, no, that's Source Code, isn't it? The Source, I'll have to check it out. It says James Michener, or Michener, yeah, check that out. Um, oh, that's just... One of mine. I am getting there. Oh, I think that's yeah, that's got there. So thank you very much. Sorry if that's a bit of a clunky way of doing it, but um so I don't know if I've got much else to add because I've already been waffling on for over 20 minutes apparently. Um just kind of catch up with where I am with this. I am gonna keep trying to do the, the live stream. Um I don't know whether it's better on Facebook or YouTube. I, I, the moment I'm streaming it on Facebook, downloading it, uploading it to YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, um, you can always comment there or click through to the blog at, you know, go to MikeyCampling.com and let me know there. Or you could email me in some way via my site, that site, at MikeyCampling.com. And let me know, because where do you want to see it? Where would be best for you for it to be live? Um, and then what I want to do is try and make this a bit more coherent because this is a bit of a rambling shambles at the moment. <laughs> I want to make it a bit more coherent, get some readings involved in there. Um, maybe I'll even plow through a whole book. I don't know. Certainly read some stories for you. I'd love to do that. And put it up as a podcast so that people can listen to it in their own time without having to look at my stupid face and all my junk in the background and uh little paul mccartney over there sort of peering in from the side <laughs> which you know gotta love the Beatles. so um yeah i don't know if i've got anything else to add there at the moment actually i'm kind of running out of steam a bit so my big thing today is just really being i've just been obsessed with this um this freshly roast mystery stuff, it, it's really been quite absorbing. It is quite tough doing a, a mystery compared to some of the others. I mean, that they all have their own challenges, different kinds of writing. And I love doing different things. And people say you shouldn't, you should stick to one thing. And I just, I don't really think like that. I don't really want to work like that. I don't read like that. That's who I should write like that. If I want to write, have a go at a mystery, who's to say, you know, it might be rubbish. It might be fantastic. Who knows? Um, it's a start and part part of doing it as a, as a shortish book is to just get it out there and see what people think and if people are saying this is great give us more of this then we can really get in depth with those characters because I think they're nice characters I do like them and they, they are kind of um, walking around and you know sitting on the chairs and tapping me on the shoulder and stuff which is which is good uh, I like to get to that stage pretty quickly um, I've sort of got my own ideas in my head of, of what they look like and everything. That I don't go in for a lot of physical description. I don't really like that. And I know lots of readers don't. So, um, you know, I, I try not to, because they can stick in your head as well. Like I've never quite forgiven um, J.K. Rowling for, um, I think, the first Harry Potter one. And she says something about the woman has makes up for having no something or other by having twice the usual amount of neck. And it, it's, it's funny, you know, it's a nice turn of phrase and everything, but it always kind of just think really not really, it just kind of it jarred with me and I didn't particularly want a physical description, but you know, and I still remember that's this day is it? That's the one thing I can remember. It's so, you know, um, I steer away from those occasionally I color and stuff I do because I think it can be useful um, in certain circumstances. So there are some things, um, there is a bit in this actually, because I think it fits more with that genre. Um, I think if people are running around in spacesuits, you don't really care what color eyes they've got. But um, if it's more of a character 
well, most of my books are character based, but I think all of them really. So, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say really, but uh, this is a bit different. It's a different style, it's got its different challenges, and I hope it works. I hope it's kind of got an element of surprise in what it's really about and what really happens. I don't want to do any spoilers. Um, I think the historical element is interesting to me anyway. I've, I've always liked history and I enjoyed looking stuff up, finding things out. Um, and it's great looking online these days because you can see all the places and you can just go and see them as they are and you can either use sort of various online or other online map services are available i won't you know necessarily advertise them for you but uh, various maps and pictures and images that people have taken and stuff like that it's great to be able to go and see places and to make them up otherwise <laughs> to fictionalize them so yeah the, it's set as well in my local area it's set in the dartmoor type area is fresh and roast mystery and um the town it was well, sorry it's a village it's in it's in a much larger village than i live in um but the vibe is there i think of the small village and i think that fits in well with that kind of mystery story and i think it's quite authentic coming from me because i live in one um it would be much harder for me to do one of these there's a lot sort of small town america type mysteries at the moment that would be really hard for me to feel like i was doing an authentic job so no i'm, I'm doing it in in my type of surroundings and it's uh, it's english spellings it's english settings it's english characters so uh, it's authentic i think and a lot of the places not the experiences are very closely based on real life things so i hope that comes across i hope that carries through to people um and i hope people enjoy it i don't know what further ones will be i'm, I'm hoping to do more of these but i've no idea what they will be that they'll they will have to all be planned out and i've had one or two ideas um but they really as i've discovered they take quite a bit of um oh hi patrick somebody's watching <laughs> uh they take quite a bit of knocking around a mystery so they have to be sort of bashed into shape um in an interesting way because you've got to give people clues so they have to be there so they have to be there from the outset really um and then if you haven't put them in in time, you've got to go back and put them in to, to properly foreshadow things. But as I've been going on for nearly half an hour, and I think that's probably more than enough of, uh, of me going on, and my cup of tea's gone cold, I'll, um, I'll sign off there. So please do let me know um, anything you want me to talk about next time, anything you particularly like or you particularly don't like, whatever. If you'd like to offer me some feedback, as they say, in the uh, Wine Country film, if you watch that, that's good. Check that out. I recommend if you want to laugh. Um, that's good. On, uh, it was on Netflix, I think. Yeah. So thank you very much. And bye for now. See if you run this video now.